The Full Melt Show is intended for a mature audience. It contains adult themes, adult content, and sometimes adult language. Listener discretion is advised. It's the Full Melt Show. It's going to be extremely busy. The shop is ready. The product on display and the countdown to recreational marijuana sales is underway. The whole team's been preparing for a couple years for this. Shane McKee is one of the owners at Shango Premium Cannabis. Here at their airport location, it's one of a handful opening its doors at midnight to usher in a new era. The early start was a little bit of a surprise for us, uh, so we thought we had till third quarter next year, and here we are third quarter this year. In all, we found out more than 100 dispensaries around Portland will begin selling at some point tomorrow. That means anyone 21 or older can buy a quarter ounce a day, no edibles just yet, and they'll have to use it in private. The Portland City Council today passed an ordinance that would also put limits on the hours of operation and ensure that stores selling recreational pot can't be within 1,000 feet of each other. But those rules will not be enforced right away. I don't see any problems. We're prepared. This is something that's happening in mainstream society. A group of parents meeting in the Park Rose neighborhood tonight are hoping the start of recreational sales here will also start a conversation. This is about breaking down stereotypes and preconceived notions that people might have about marijuana users. But they realize it's going to be an adjustment for everyone from dispensaries on down. Even if it's not something you agree with or not something that you choose to use or that you are comfortable being around, um, it's still an important time because we as citizens of Oregon are going to be walking this walk of new, you know, recreational legal marijuana sales together. Are you high? Are you high? This is the full melt. Give me a The full melt show. A marijuana discussion about news, culture, politics, and lifestyle. Fullmelt.com. Toll free. 844-420-TALK. 844-420-TALK. Up and running as always, live from the PetPain.com studios. It is the Full Melt Show for Thursday, October 1st, 2015. What a show it's going to be. So today we saw looking around, trying to figure out what the hell is going on in Oregon. What's going on in Oregon? Well, you just heard the uh, le- retail cannabis shops. See, I always try and say it that way. It's, it, it is retail cannabis, right? I think so. Stop saying recreational. It's so stupid. It's so immature. It's such backwards thinking. I mean, it's negative impressioning right out of the gate with retail cannabis. Got to call it recreational. Come on. Uh, so that bugs me. I, I, I'm going to make a concerted effort through the coming political cycle to make sure that the public and the media refer to this as it is rather than as they've been commonly, you know, associated. I don't know where this term came from. I think it came from government. I mean, maybe it came from Colorado when Colorado did this. They ended up calling it recreational. They really didn't do that in the law because if you apply for a license to just, you know, distribute marijuana in California, uh, you know, just for for the public in general, for adults. It says retail, you know, retail marijuana license. I don't even think it says marijuana. I think it says retail cannabis. That's what it says. If you'd like, I can call and confirm it with somebody. Pretty sure that uh, when you get the license, I've seen one online. I've seen them a, a year ago. In 2014, or, you know, right around then, people started getting their licenses. And uh, uh, I saw them posted online. People would take a picture of their license proudly and display it on the wall. It looks like any other business license with a little green seal around it. It says, uh, you know, it's small. It's just a small certificate. It's like you get for a barber shop or any other establishment, establishment that requires state licensing. And it says retail cannabis. I mean, that's what it is. So what is the rage? You know what I want want to do? He's on the air right now, or I'd uh, I'd borrow Russ. Um, I'd I'd like to reach out to Russ Belleville. Maybe we can talk to him tomorrow, being Friday. Perhaps I can set it up that we'll uh, yak with him tomorrow about what the hell's going on. You can tune into Russ's show. It's at 420radio.org. Russ, much better equipped to tell you about the experience in Oregon than I. Um, But I can give you the version that came from the TV news. 
Um, the story that you heard there was from, uh, I think, ABC7. Is that where it was? I'm going to double check here. Um, and, and, you know, they're giving you the, the snapshot view. I mean, they're giving you the typical media view of what retail cannabis is, I suppose. If you're going to, you know, they still called it, you know, recreational is what they did. Uh, they st- that's what kind of lit my fire. Um, but this is actually, this was not a uh, station. This was WLS-TV in Chicago that did that report. The report actually coming out of AP, WLS uh, preparing that video piece that you heard at the beginning of the show. The shops in Oregon beginning to sell marijuana, according to the article Thursday, for the first time uh, to, quote-unquote, recreational users. See, it is the media. This is the Associated Press saying these words, not me. I, You know, I should start replacing the words recreational with retail um, anytime I read it. And then that way I've omitted the word from the article. I'll let you know ahead of time that I'm going to replace all references to recreational with references referring to retail. And, and you know, the it was cute 20 years ago to uh, use the little pot, you know, every time it, it, the news has always got to use stupid terms to try, you know, like they say, oh, the budding industry and, you know, uh, marijuana's on fire. I mean, I, really, you're still using them? Can you, can, you, can you do something else to attract us to think that you're clever in your writing uh, other than saying that it, it, it's a budding industry? Come on. You got, you got to have something more than that. It, it makes you look so juvenile. Some of the more than 250 dispensaries that already offered medical marijuana in Oregon opened their doors soon after midnight, so it's today, just moments after it became legal to sell to anyone who was at least 21. At Portland's Shango Premium Cannabis, co-founder Mike, I'm sorry, Shane McKee said the first sale to an excited customer came about a minute after midnight with many others waiting. See, this is Oregon's, you know, January 1st this year. Colorado got a, a you know a head start on this. Oregon wasn't going to do this for another I don't know whole year. Uh, they 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 muscled this forth with effort to get it done early, and they did. Starting at midnight last night, it would have been nice to have done a radio show uh, surrounding that city because I'd have had to be up at like three in the morning here. <laughs> Broadcasting live at 3 in the morning on the East Coast to cover the Oregon West Coast sales at midnight. It looks like there's about 60 to 70 in line out front, he said, in a telephone interview shortly after midnight. So this is just like, you know, the guys that are camping out to get the new iPhone or the guys that are hanging out to get the Black Friday sales at Christmas time. 60 to 70 people waiting outside the cannabis shop to be there uh, to, to be a part of that experience. This is how much emotion is wrapped up in this change in historical presence. I mean, this is what it is. These these people are excited to be a part of the change, the hard-fought-for change in public policy about cannabis in their state. They're proud of it, and they damn well should be. A lot of these people work tirelessly to get this done. Sacrificed, raised money, spent money. Spent countless volunteer hours walking around, collecting signatures, making sure that Oregon couldn't tell them no. And they didn't. So they're all really excited. He says they all seem really extremely eager. That first buyer, David Fleming of Portland, said the sales launch was important. It was, I was really excited about that, said Fleming, who uses the drug for medical purposes. In the end, it's the end of prohibition, he says. She described the uh, atmosphere inside the store as beautiful, very friendly. Everyone's upbeat. Store owners say they're hopeful that they can avoid the shortages and price spikes that followed the start of the legal sales last year in Washington and Colorado. The only other states where the drug can now be sold for retail use. Alaska could also begin retail sales next year. Many stores in Oregon were trying to lure customers, according to the article, with extended hours, food giveaways, and discounted marijuana. I mean, this is a party-like atmosphere. This sounds more like a tailgate experience than anything else, doesn't it? McKee said his store offered its first 
25 customers a 35 to 40 percent discount. The store was also handling out uh, handing out soda, coffee, juice, and other refreshments. You'll notice booze wasn't on the list. Uh, but he also pointed out what he considered the significance of the moment. I think it's not only historical for folks in Oregon, but nationwide. Anytime people start selling that as an alternative to alcohol or tobacco. Isn't it? Isn't that right? Shoppers have one more incentive to buy early and often. Under Oregon law, pot purchases will be tax-free until January. That'll give you a savings of up to 20%. One store was offering a goodie bag with T-shirts, but no free marijuana, of course. (laughs) You got to go inside for the marijuana, and it ain't going to be free. Will cost you 20% less than if you waited until after the beginning of the year. The marijuana review site Leafly will set up uh, with food trucks at a handful of stores giving away free meals to anyone who promotes the service on social media. <laughs> Look at that. Look, the way to a pot smoker's heart is through his stomach. Uh, several stores have been erecting billboards in Portland. A shop in Merlin is advertising on the radio. I'm just trying to basically stock up for maybe four or five times what the normal volume would be, said Chris Byers, owner of River City Dispensary in southern Oregon, town of Merlin. Uh, Customers can buy as much as seven grams at a time of dried marijuana flower and leaf, the part that's generally smoked, plus plants and seeds. Uh, For the next year or so, marijuana-infused candy, cookies, oils, and lotions will be available only to people with medical marijuana cards as the state works on retail regulations involving... See, they said retail! Involving those products. <clears throat> See, it's funny when they say they go to food, they say retail. They go to pot and they say uh, recreational. You see what I mean? This is the same writer in the same story using these words in divisive ways. Language is powerful and underestimated. Oregon has a robust supply system for marijuana that has supported medical marijuana users and the black market. Companies have invested in massive warehouses in Portland to grow the drug indoors, and Southern Oregon has some of the nation's best conditions for outdoor cultivation of marijuana. Growers don't face strict regulations yet so that supply can more easily flow into retail stores than it did in Washington and Colorado. Still, there's concern. Summer has historically been a time that marijuana has shortages in Oregon. Most of the outdoor crop isn't ready to harvest. Indoor growers have had minimal time to ramp up production since lawmakers have only approved the October 1st date three months ago. I mean, you got to give these guys a little bit of heads up. Just a little bit of heads up before you expect it to show up for sale for your greedy, grubby little fingers inside a quote-unquote pot shop. You know what I mean? You're getting the full melt. Got something to hide? Canalock offers discreet and effective storage solutions that destroy odor, so nobody knows. Canalock is a patented charcoal activated bag that discreetly stores your marijuana. Canalock is made from the same material as military chemical warfare suits. Get yours at canalock.com. Visit canalock.com to learn more about no smell technology. Hey, it's Steve Green for the Sweet Leaf in Flint because now getting safe access to medical cannabis patients in Flint, Michigan is never more welcoming. Presenting the Sweet Leaf, a brand new patient experience bringing 12 carefully selected caregivers housed in nine separate offices to distinctly assist you with their knowledge and reputation for excellent patient care. Classes and training coming soon in the large community room. Check it out in person, 400 South Door Highway or call 810 259 25 The Sweet Leaf Center in Flint, 810-259-2571. Introducing Sacred Elements, a place for natural and alternative healing for the mind, body, and soul. Sacred Elements. It's one place. All solutions. Registered, licensed, certified, ordained. Sacred Elements. Massage, hypnosis, Reiki. Sacred Elements. Raindrop, aroma and color therapy. Body detox. Ministry, life coaching, weight and nutrition counseling. Sacred Elements. Next to the Sweet Leaf, 400 South Door Highway, Flint. 11 to 7 daily, closed Sunday. Call 810-259-2570. Young students are our future. They're eager to learn, eager to succeed, eager to make the world a better place. And they want to make it to school safely. Share the road, take care when passing, and always leave three feet between you and people on bikes. 
Bikes are legal road vehicles. We're all drivers. Don't miss the first ever cannabis competition this year as the prize contest moves from Amsterdam to Jamaica. That's right, it's all Jamaican fun now with the big cup competition in Negril this November. Get your best travel accommodations now at jamaicapot.com. Pack your beach bong and swimsuit and party down at the warm sandy beaches of Negril, Jamaica for the first ever big cannabis event this year. Do it in style or come have fun on a budget. Best travel prices now at jamaicapot.com. That's jamaicapot.com. What's up with these things, Victor? We decided to give ourselves stickers for each feature we release. We read about 10,000 suggestions a week to create features that, as traders, we'd want to use. 10,000 suggestions? Who reads all of those? He does. For all the confidence you need, TD Ameritrade, you got this. It's the Full Melt Radio Show. Radio Show. You know, if you want to have marijuana in this country, you've got to march forth your freedom. Say that, that one of the most important things you could do to march forth freedom is to participate in the electoral process in this country. As the uh, political process marches forward, you'll notice that a lot of people in the country uh, have admitted to smoking their weed. I mean, it started out with uh, President Clinton. Wasn't he the first guy to admit that he smoked some pot? I think he was. Well... Let's modify that. Let's let's Clintonize it a little bit, shall we? I love I love Clinton for his mastery of the human language. I'll tell you what, there's a guy who can dance the pants off an ant with his mouth. I mean, he knows how to use the language to its full capacity. This learned scholar. <clears throat> but um Mr. Clinton never really admitted to smoking marijuana, did he? In one sense, he did. But in one sense, he didn't. He said that he, that he tried it once in college, that he didn't inhale, and he didn't like it, and he'll never, he never tried it again. I think he's full of shit. I think that was his answer at the time because it was the only political expedient response he could make and not dig himself a hole. But that, along with playing the saxophone on the Arsenio Hall show and showing up in late night talk shows, which no president had previously done. Not a candidate either. The candidates didn't show up on the nighttime talk shows. They just weren't there. Now you see them with routine fervity. Is fervity a word? I think I just made it up. Um, as, as these guys make these admissions, people like the president. I mean, you saw this whole thing. This article references it. I'll just read the article. It's from Fortune magazine. Uh, This is a publication obviously founded around the ideal that you can make money in America through investment. Uh, And therefore, you have to look to our country's CEOs. These are the same CEOs in in this country that say, no, no, no. Uh, What about the marijuana thing? Look, if you smoke pot and you work for our company, you're going to get fired. We're going to have to drug test you uh, randomly. We're going to make sure that you're not using drugs when we hire you. And then randomly along the way somewhere, uh, we will probably test you. If you test positive for pot, we're going to offer you some rehabilitation. We're going to offer you some counseling. We're going to offer you some therapy. And if that doesn't work, you're fired. Get the hell out of here. Pack your bags. Get your shit and go. Earlier this month at the second Republican presidential debate, former uh, Florida Governor Jeb Bush admitted to smoking marijuana, quote, 40 years ago, end quote, much to the dismay of his mother, he admitted. Uh, Not that he'd smoked the pot, that he admitted to smoking the pot. You see, that's another clever Clintonism, isn't it? Look, my mom's going to be disappointed that I admitted, admitted to smoking pot 40 years ago. She's not disappointed that I smoked the pot, you see, because, you know, my mom knows me. She's good with me. She's not disappointed that I smoked the pot. I don't even know if she knew I smoked the pot, but she don't care about the pot. She's disappointed that my political, you know, I don't know, clout might be damaged by the idea that he made this admission in the shadow of his brother's presidency. I mean, Jeb, uh, he never really talked about pot, did he? Jeb had to defend himself on the cocaine issue. Uh, Not Jeb, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Bush number two. 
uh, President W. That's what they should call him, President W. They can't say W. It's W. President W. Bush. Um, for those who remember former candidate Bill Clinton's torture claim that he had smoked pot but never inhaled, it's a sign of how much the times have changed. Medical marijuana is now legal in 23 states. You know, this is this little inclusion in these stories gets really old, too. It's just background, you know. It, it, it's you got to provide the context in which this article takes place. And, and, and every single article that r- talks about this subject always has this inclusion. I just want to skip past it. I'll tell you what it is. And then from now on, I skip past. Medical marijuana is now legal in 23 states in Alaska, Colorado, Washington, Oregon, and the District of Columbia. You can legally toke up to uh, toke up for purely recreational purposes. See, there we go with the recreational again. According to the Federal Bureau of Investigation, arrests for simple possession are on the rise, but otherwise, the drug has never been more mainstream. Many current and former CEOs have come out in favor of either discrimination or legalization. I'm sorry, decriminalization. Why can't I read tonight? What's going on with that? Microsoft's Bill Gates and John Mackey of Whole Foods have both gone on the record to support legalization. And across the pond, Sir Richard Branson went so far as to say that given the opportunity to do so legally, he would, quote unquote, invest in the marijuana industry. (laughs) Some CEOs have also put out their own money into efforts to legalize marijuana themselves. The late John Sperling, former CEO for the for-profit University of Phoenix. And by the way, I, I have issues with the University of Phoenix. Through 200 grand of what used to be government money, student loan money, that's student loan money these kids are never going to get. Oh, never mind. I won't go on the, don't, don't get me off on the University of Phoenix. The guy spent money on weed, I'm good. Uh, $200,000 into efforts to pass Prop 19, a 1996 medical marijuana initiative that lost at the ballot box. Talking about California. In 2000, he partnered with investor George Soros and others to raise $3.7 million for Prop 36, which would have replaced prison time with drug treatment for nonviolent drug offenders. Facebook co-founders Sean Parker and Dustin Moskovitz also supported California's Prop 19 giving $100,000 and $70,000, respectively, towards the campaign for California's ballot measure to legalize marijuana. (laughs) There are also those who have done more than just voice an opinion or support legalization. Some business leaders have gone all in and admitted to smoking weed themselves. They may characterize it as a youthful indiscretion, while others say they've been at it for decades with no ill effect. (coughs) Excuse me. Either way, it's uh, no longer the career-destroying taboo that it used to be. The article at Fortune.com for Fortune magazine goes on to say Fortune presents a list of seven current and former CEOs who have admitted to smoking pot, and we've included their propositions on legalization when they've been made public. Michael Bloomberg. Former three-term mayor of New York City, Michael Bloomberg, is the founder, CEO, and owner of Bloomberg Media Company. In 2001, prior to running for mayor, He was interviewed by New York Magazine and asked if he had ever smoked marijuana. Famously, he answered, you bet I did, and I enjoyed it. In 2002, the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws Foundation initiated a $500,000 ad campaign featuring his face alongside the quote. It appeared in the full-page ads in New York Times. And if you weren't a subscriber, you could see it splashed along the sides of New York City buses every time he went outdoors. This forced him to revisit the issue, and when he did, he said that he regretted making the comment and that he was opposed to decriminalization. Uh, he said he was, quote, a believer that we should enforce the laws, and I do not think that decriminalizing marijuana is a good idea. Bloomberg. See, it was okay for me, rich white guy, but if we take the criminal penalties out of pot... Oh, see, that makes it unfair now for him. He doesn't like the idea that other people can smoke pot, too. That's what he just basically said, isn't it? I smoked the weed. I liked it. I enjoyed it. You know, I probably just smoked some weed yesterday or last week or over the weekend. But I'm not going to tell you that because I regret it. I regretted saying that because I showed you up under my skirt, didn't I? Let everybody see my nakedness underneath my, my lying clothes. 
Richard Branson. Virgin Group founder Sir Richard Branson's desire to one day invest in the marijuana industry is founded on more than just his shrewd business acumen. The man named top social media CEO by World of CEO also has a personal experience with the drug. In a 2007 interview in GQ, he told Piers Morgan that he smoked pot with his adult son, Sam, during an Australian beach vacation. That sounds like a great time. I want a, a, an Australian beach vacation involving pot. Oh, I want to go now. As a bonus, when Sam Branson smokes weed with his dad, the joints are likely to be rolled in expert fashion. The British entrepreneur also told Piers Morgan that he learned the art of joint rolling from none other than Rolling Stones guitarist Keith Richards, whom one can safely assume has vast knowledge in that area. Moving on to Hugh Hefner. That's right, the velvet robed and often pipe holding master of the Playboy Mansion. Hugh Hefner launched Playboy magazine in the late 50s. His long history of marijuana legalization advocacy also stretches back several decades. The National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws, Normal, was founded in 1970 thanks to an infusion of $5,000 from Hugh Hefner's Playboy Foundation. Decades later, his views hadn't changed. Here's the quote. I don't think there's any question that marijuana should be legalized because it's because to not legalize it, we're paying the same price we paid for prohibition, he said in 2010. In other words, it's a medical, uh, a medical concern, and it should be handled that way. According to Patrick Anderson's book, High in America, the true story behind normal and the politics of marijuana, Hefner sang the drug's praises in 1980, claiming that it made sex more rewarding. I can tell you it does. Smoking helped put me in touch with the realm of the senses, he reportedly told the author. I discovered a whole other dimension to sex. Mark Johnson. He's the CEO and co-founder of Descartes Labs. A Los, Angeles, uh, Los Alamos-based tech company. Uh, prior to that, he was the CEO of Zeit, a company based in Silicon Valley that created personalized news streams for mobile devices. <clears throat> when he was still at Zeit, he told Bloomberg that he smoked marijuana Day in and day out. And that pot use was so widespread among Silicon Valley tech workers that it simply isn't an issue. You, 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 you got to remember that Silicon Valley and, and now San Francisco is full of these tech giant magnates. And th th these companies are comprised of everybody from, tw from the ages of 12 years old on up, but you won't find many people in the 40s and 50s in these organizations. They don't really exist. The platform on which they sit is written in language and code these people do not understand. People in that age group, and mind you, I'm part of that age group. I'm I'm 48. Don't understand the technology. I mean, it's hard to I just taught somebody today who's probably, I don't know, maybe 10 years my senior, um, how to use Facebook. She knew about Facebook. She's been told about Facebook. She's got the Facebook ability on her phone. She'd never got a Facebook account. So I showed her today how to use it. I'm just saying these people are like, oh, I don't have the time for that. Well, you sit there and you play the games on your phone, right? Well, Facebook is just a social game. Look at it that way. It's, it's harder to get these older people involved in all of the, uh, all the technology. It, it takes longer for them to suck it up and start using it. Once they get there, once they understand how useful and what a great tool it is, they're all about it. And they're really good at it, by the way. But getting them on board is a, a much harder thing. I'm just saying, if you go to these companies, you're not going to find old people with, uh, you know, ogie, o, old fogey, uh, stogie ideas. The room isn't going to be stuffy with cigar smoke. It's going to be stuffy with pot smoke, but it's going to be outside and probably in somebody's car cab or out behind the tree line next to the Google building. I mean, that's I'll, I'll bet you you can find pot smoking all around these places. This guy just admitted in the tech areas in California, it's so mainstream, it's just not an issue. People just don't care, he said. If you do, you don't need to hide it. And if you don't, you accept that there are people around you that do. 
He's also poo-pooed the idea that smoking pot would affect anyone's productivity. Pot is an extremely functional drug, he said. Coders can code on it. Writers can write on it. Talking to you on it right now for crying out loud. Peter Lewis, the late Peter Lewis, joined the progressive insurance company and a low-level underwriting position in the 50s. A decade later, at the age of 31, he was its CEO, a position he retained until his retirement in 2000. He stayed on as its chairman until his death only two short years ago. Lewis used medical marijuana to combat chronic pain from a leg amputation he had undergone in 1998 and has given generously and repeatedly to marijuana legalization causes, according to the Los Angeles Times. He donated over $1.7 million to California's decrim measures between 1996 and 2010. I'm supporting the campaign because I support common sense reform of the nation's drug laws, he said, of his donation for Prop 19 in 2010. I admire the effort energy and commitment of the people involved in the campaign and want to help them get their message out to the voters. John Sperling, who passed away last year at the age of 93, was CEO of the University of Phoenix, a for-profit college that he founded in 1976. He was known as a bit of an eccentric, spending massive amounts of money on unsuccessful efforts to clone his pet dog, according to the New York Times. Sperling also partnered with progressive insurance company CEO Peter Lewis to donate money to marijuana legalization efforts. A prostate cancer survivor, he said that smoking marijuana has helped him manage the side effects of the treatment he received for it. I can tell you that the mainstream American thought on marijuana as it's related to cancer is one of relief from the drug treatment. Because people understand in America that cancer treatment many times, is what causes the death of these cancer patients, not the cancer itself, which is why many people choose opt not to seek out cancer uh, treatment because they would rather take their odds of beating it. I can tell you that the truth behind this matter is that cannabis can cure cancer. I thought the same thing when I first was exposed to the idea, you're nuts. The truth of the matter is Many kinds of cancer and cancer as a whole is strongly inhibited by the factors made present in the properties of marijuana. You're getting the bull milk. Get ready, let's go. Hey, na 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 na. Oh, hey, na, hey, na, let's go. Yeah, I've got style. I'll make it wild. I'll change it up and switch it up to versatile. I'll be myself and I'm gonna let everybody know. We have the latest styles to mix it and mash it. So make it your own and bend the trend. JCPenney. When it fits, you feel it. During the JCPenney Back to School Hot Sale, get an extra $10 off when you spend $25 or more with coupon. Nike, Converse, Levi's, and other exclusions apply. What's up with these things, Victor? We decided to give ourselves stickers for each feature we release. We read about 10,000 suggestions a week to create features that, as traders, we'd want to use. 10,000 suggestions? Who reads all of those? He does. For all the confidence you need, TD Ameritrade, you got this. Don't miss the first ever cannabis competition this year as the prize contest moves from Amsterdam to Jamaica. That's right, it's all Jamaican fun now with the big cup competition in Negril this November. Get your best travel accommodations now at jamaicapot.com. Pack your beach bong and swimsuit and party down at the warm sunny beaches of Negril, Jamaica for the first ever big cannabis event this year. Do it in style or come have fun on a budget. Best travel prices now at jamaicapot.com. That's jamaicapot.com. If you're like us, your pets aren't just animals. They're members of your family. Pet Pain CBD Hemp Oil Drops are great for aging as well as active dogs and cats. Some people are apprehensive about hemp treatments for pets. They ask us, what are you smoking? Absolutely nothing, and neither will your pet. Like other hemp-based products for humans, the Allure is all of the benefits of cannabis without any of the high. The CBD oil has shown to rejuvenate the bones, joints, brain, stomach, eyes, and heart, And the drops contain absolutely no corn, wheat, soy, artificial colors and flavors, or preservatives. Pick some up today. Visit PetPain.com or ask for PetPain at your local pet store. 
PetPain.com. CBD relief for your pet. We ask people to tell us something that happened in their past and something that might happen in their future. The good things were put on yellow magnets and the bad ones on blue. The results show the past was a pretty even mix of good and bad, yet the future was almost all good things. Now that you've seen the results of this experiment, what does it mean to you? We all want to think about positive stuff. Realistically, there will be downtimes. It's great to think optimistically, but let's plan for whatever the future might bring. Prudential, bring your challenges. It's the Full Melt Radio Show. Radio Show. I wish I found some better sounds no one's ever heard. I wish I had a better voice to sing some better words. Hey, I'm not over. I'm not done. The Fortune Magazine article goes on. It's not just those insurance company guys. They're all involved in the pot. What about Oprah Winfrey? Oh, the big O. (laughs) The big O. (laughs) Oprah Winfrey's days as a talk show host are over. However, she's still the chairwoman and CEO of Harpo Productions and the chairwoman, CEO, and CCO of the Oprah Winfrey Network, so she's definitely still in business. Winfrey, whose net worth is $3 billion, that's billion with a B, dollars, has never given a, prop, a position on the legalization of marijuana, but she has twice admitted on national television to having smoked it. Uh, the first occasion was in 2013 on Watch What Happens Live when she said that she had had last done it in 1982. The second was during a May appearance on The Late Show with David Letterman when she said she hadn't smoked weed in 30 years. George Zimmerman, I guarantee it. You're going to like it. The founder and former CEO of Men's Warehouse has been smoking pot for decades. He guarantees it. See, I I, I knew they were going to say that. In September, he told CNBC that he's, quote, been smoking marijuana on a regular basis for about 50 years, end quote. And he still looks stunning doing it in those Men's Warehouse suits. He's advocated legalization on CNBC and said that he's expected to throw his support behind a 2016 California ballot initiative to legalize recreational marijuana use. Men's Warehouse fired him in 2013, but he's not bitter about it. In fact, he characterized it as, quote, probably the greatest thing that's ever happened to me, end quote. (laughs) He went on to create Generation Tux, an online tuxedo rental company, and Z Taylors, an online tailoring company. There's a guy who understands, because, you know, George Zimmerman... Looks a lot older in person than he does on television, I'll tell you that. But he understands technology. He created some tech companies, right? This isn't rocket science. On to another story in uh, Pennsylvania. Um, I got to tell you that we had Senator Mike Fulmer on this show back earlier this year. He's a Republican who represents parts of York County. He was talking recently at an event in North Londonderry Township, uh, Lebanon County, in April. Fulmer sponsored a medical marijuana legal uh, legislation, rather, in the Senate, and he said he was invited to a meeting with a House work group that met 10 times to discuss medical marijuana legalization. A nine-page memo with recommendations from the group was released this week. You can tell they worked hard on this, Fulmer said of the ad hoc group. The House generated report on medical marijuana legislation has recommendations that Senator Dalen Leach, the Democrat from Montgomery County, said he can live with. While he has squibbles, or quibbles, rather, squibbles, quibbles with the nine-page memo prepared by House Majority Policy Chair Ken, uh, I'm sorry, Kerry Benninghoff, uh, a Republican, Leach said the list of recommendations is something he could see the Senate voting for and moving to Governor Tom Wolf's desk. Focusing on treatable conditions, delivery methods, distribution, and patient access, the recommendations came from a 13-member bipartisan medical marijuana work group formed by House Majority Leader Dave Reed, a Republican. The group met 10 times between July and September. Uh, September. <laughs> the September date, the memo states. 
Uh, the memo shows the House is in serious is serious now about this," said Senator Mike Fulmer, a Republican who is the prime sponsor of Senate Bill Three, which would legalize some forms of medical marijuana for specific conditions. When the recommendations became amendments, however, is uh, what Chris Goldstein, executive director of Philly Normal, wants to know. The memo is merely a list of recommendations from legislators who have generally supported medical marijuana, Goldstein said. I have a feeling this will be held hostage until a budget is passed. Noting that the recommendations don't expand anything from Senate Bill 3, which cleared the Senate in May. The House has been hesitant in taking up medical marijuana legislation. SB 3 was referred to the House Health Committee, where it was blocked. Before being re-referred to the House Chambers Rules Committee in June, a separate bill in the House, HB 1432, was introduced in June. Critics of that bill, proposed by Representative Ron Marcisco, a, a, a Republican, said it was extremely limited in, as a version of Fulmer's bill. Reed would also like to get something drafted and passed, said Stephen Merkson, uh, I'm sorry, Miskin, Reed's spokesman. A final bill could be prepared before the year is up, he said. If lawmakers work expediously, uh, a medical marijuana bill could reach the governor's desk by November 1st, according to Leach. The recommendations are as follows. The Department of Health would be governing and licensing authority for a medical marijuana program that would be managed by a voluntary board consisting of no more than 19 members. Good Lord. Representing the medical marijuana field, law enforcement, <coughs> each legislative caucus, and drug and alcohol treatment programs. Are you serious? Seriously, 19 people on this committee. The cops are on there. Legislative caucus guys on there. Law enforcement uh, representatives. Alcohol and treatment, drug treatment programs. Why do these guys got to be involved in this? Seriously. The majority of the group wanted at least 65 dispensaries for the state that would be spread out geographically based on the size of the patient group served by the medical marijuana program, according to the memo. But since not everyone agreed to that, the report revised Reed or advised Reed rather to continue to work to determine the need, access, and internal caucus positions that would pinpoint a number of growers, processors, and dispensaries. The free market should determine the state's need for growers, processors, and prices of medical marijuana, said Rep. Mike Reagan, Republican, who uh, was also one of the members of the work group. Without free market involvement, Reagan said the price for the drug could be too costly, forcing people to seek alternatives on the black market. Beautiful thinking. Conditions recommended by the group. Cancer, including uh, some cancer wasting. Uh, ALS, HIV AIDS, including wasting syndrome there. Parkinson's disease, multiple sclerosis, epilepsy and seizures. Damage to the nervous tissue of the spinal cord. Neuropathies, inflammatory bowel disease, Huntington's disease, post-traumatic stress disorder, glaucoma, Crohn's disease, and chronic Intractable pain. <clears throat> Delivery methods recommended. Pills, oils, topicals, lotions, salves, etc., and vaporization, the memo states. Smoking and commercially produced edibles should be prohibited as these methods present the greatest risk for diversion as well as contributes to the appearance of recreational use. Really? Oh, it looks like you could be using that medicine recreationally. What a bunch of bungholes. Funding medical marijuana. There's currently no, quote, medical marijuana, quote, line item in the proposed general fund budget, according to the state's Department of Health. <laughs> the department plans to use a $2 million grant that is part of the Commonwealth Universal Research Enhancement or CURE program to fund a medical marijuana pilot study, said Amy Worden, who is the health department press secretary. Uh, the health departments will solicit proposals for cannabidiol or CBD oil, a study uh, that will examine the use of marijuana extract to treat children with epileptic seizures. That program was initially unveiled in 2014 by then-Governor Tom Corbett. Governor Wolf's press office has pledged the governor's support for the program that won't likely begin treating patients until next year. The program was initially slated to be conducted by physicians at Penn State Hershey Children's Hospital, St. Christopher's Hospital for Children in Philadelphia, and Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. Health officials are considering qualified facilities in the state that can conduct research studies that meet the program's requirements. Ohio, swinging the bat hard. Thank you, Senator Fulmer 
And uh, who was the other guy? Uh, he's another critical guy. Let me just pan back here because I always forget his name. Um, he's the guy in the Senate that was helping Senator Fulmer. I'm sorry, in the House that was helping Senator Fulmer, who's a Senate member, uh, get his legislation forward. Uh, just got to find him. Do, 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 do. Oh, you know who you are. Uh, you, you probably don't care anyway, the longer run of things. I got to thank his colleague in the other uh, department, I- across the aisle in, in, in their legislative halls, uh, for helping Senator Fulmer get this legislation relooked at. Because there are definitely some people in the Ohio, uh, in the Pennsylvania legislature that would like to knock this in the knees. Um, Senator Fulmer, I'll remind you, is from a very conservative, probably one of the most conservative districts. He's a Republican, conservative Republican in one of the most conservative districts in the state, was muscled forth by ladies with children with epilepsy in understanding the truth behind this matter, was so impacted by their query and their plight that he took action against political grain to get something done. And and that's uh, Senator Fulmer, uh, look, I'm a, I'm a Democrat. I'll probably never, ever vote Republican, ever. I like your style, Senator. Thank you for doing what you do. Thank you for standing aside for partisan politics and doing the right damn thing. Thank you, sincerely, from the heart. Um, You did the right thing because those children depend upon you doing the right thing and, and not bowing to political pressure. What else is going on in the news here? Uh, oh, boy. All right, this is uh, the Chicago Tribune talking about this. And what a mess it is out there in, in, in Illinois with the medical marijuana business. The business is in Illinois starting a $1 million marketing campaign, hoping to jumpstart a struggling industry out there in Chicagoland and all of Illinois. A $1 million campaign. Well, I'll just tell you, as far as I know, at last check, and we'll, we'll double check when we come back from the break, but last check, there were less than 3,000 patients signed up in all of Illinois that were qualified to get medical marijuana at a dispensary once they open. The question is, how do you support all those shops and all that growing on them? You're getting the full melt. Young students are our future. They're eager to learn, eager to succeed eager to make the world a better place. And they want to make it to school safely. Share the road. Take care when passing. And always leave three feet between you and people on bikes. Bikes are legal road vehicles. We're all drivers. Imagine a world where patients can use marijuana like any other medicine. The Marijuana Patients Organization challenges the status quo by helping our neighbors to enjoy a better quality of life. Visit the MPO at MarijuanaPatients.org and enjoy informative articles, engaging debates, and information about treatments, doctors, and dispensaries in your area. Over 50,000 people have registered at MarijuanaPatients.org since 2010. Join us at the Marijuana Patients Organization today, MarijuanaPatients.org. Hey, it's Steve Green for the Sweet Leaf in Flint, because now getting safe access to medical cannabis patients in Flint, Michigan, is never more welcoming. Presenting the Sweet Leaf, a brand new patient experience bringing 12 carefully selected caregivers housed in nine separate offices to distinctly assist you with their knowledge and reputation for excellent patient care. Classes and training coming soon in the large community room. Check it out in person, 400 South Door Highway, or call 810 259 2571. The Sweet Leaf Center in Flint, 810 259 2571. If you're like us, your pets aren't just animals, they're members of your family. Pet Pain CBD Hemp Oil Drops are great for aging as well as active dogs and cats. Some people are apprehensive about hemp treatments for pets. They ask us, What are you smoking? Absolutely nothing, and neither will your pet. Like other hemp-based products for humans, the Allure is all of the benefits of cannabis without any of the high. The CBD oil has shown to rejuvenate the bones, joints, brain, stomach, eyes, and heart. And the drops contain absolutely no corn, wheat, soy, artificial colors and flavors, or preservatives. Pick some up today. 
visit PetPain.com or ask for Pet Pain at your local pet store. PetPain.com. CBD relief for your pet. Got something to hide? Canalock offers discreet and effective storage solutions that destroy odor, so nobody knows. Canalock is a patented charcoal activated bag that discreetly stores your marijuana. Canalock is made from the same material as military chemical warfare suits. Get yours at canalock.com. Visit canalock.com to learn more about no smell technology. What's up with these things, Victor? We decided to give ourselves stickers for each feature we release. We read about 10,000 suggestions a week to create features that, as traders, we'd want to use. 10,000 suggestions? Who reads all of those? He does. For all the confidence you need, TD Ameritrade, you got this. It's the full melt. Radio show. Radio show. Trying to try to jumpstart that industry out there in Chicago and Illinois. Medical marijuana business is launching a $1 million marketing campaign. That's right, $1 million. Putting it on the barrel head. Despite a ban on advertising by growers in the state. Really? Cresco Labs, which plans to open three pot cultivation centers on Wednesday, announced it will spread its message through an outreach campaign that includes print advertising, radio commercials, billboards, social media, and notices in public health notifications. The ad features health-related images like a swimmer and a jogger with messages like, Welcome to a state of relief, medical cannabis, now growing in Illinois. (laughs) The promotions will feature the company logo and refer people to more information at crescolabs.com. Cultivation centers may market to doctors and dispensaries, but Illinois Department of Agricultural Regulations state Quote, cultivation centers may not advertise through any public medium designed to market their products to the public, end quote. In response to a question about whether that regulation applies in this case, Cresco officials said the program was meant to promote the state medical marijuana program as a whole, not their products specifically. Cresco President Rob Sampson said this outreach campaign is about educating patients and doctors that there are new forms of medical relief in Illinois and directing them to our website to use as a portal for applying. All educational outreach to create awareness of this program, whether by us or anyone else in this industry, is clearly within the state's guidelines. Rebecca Clark is a spokeswoman for the Department of Agriculture, And she wrote in an email that department officials had seen the ads and are, quote, evaluating enforcement options, end quote. The department may assess monetary fines or other conditions for rule violations, her email said. The marketing campaign is an attempt to increase awareness and participation in an industry that is still struggling to get off the ground more than two years after the state lawmakers authorized it. This is what happens when you let legislators... Take control of this issue. They they F it up. They drag things out. They screw things up. <clears throat> the government is not and hasn't been a good steward of either people's money or trust. And this is why. This is a prime example of why. There are medical patients suffering two years after the legislature passed this initiative. Still can't get cannabis in their systems in a legal way. They're going to the black market right now. The program has been beset by delays in developing rules and awarding licenses for 18 grow warehouses and up to 60 retail stores and business owners have faced weather-related construction delays, lawsuits, and zoning problems. Most worrisome to business owners is that so far only about 3,000 patients, didn't I tell you, have submitted fingerprints and completed other requirements for getting qualified to use the drug far below the initial estimates of more than 100,000 patients. Uh, the problem is, in, 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 as I understand it, in talking to people in Illinois, uh, most recently visiting there in July, um, great time, by the way, in Chicago in July, out there at My Compassion's event, promoting medical marijuana, trying to educate people and doctors, mind you, On this subject, it's a very difficult thing to do when people don't understand what's happening and have to actively participate in educational forums like these. 
Only nine cultivation uh, centers have been authorized to begin growing to date, while others are still in various stages of preparation. Growers say they expect to harvest their first crop in late October or November, almost a year behind initial projections. One crucial roadblock to the program's expansion, advocates say, was the decision last month by Governor Bruce Ran- uh, Ra- <clears throat> excuse me, Rahner's administration to reject an advisory board's recommendation to add 11 new qualifying medical conditions, including arthritis and post-traumatic stress disorder. A runner also vetoed a proposed extension of the four-year pilot program. Remember, this is a pilot program now scheduled to end in April of 2018. I mean, all these growers, all this licensing, all this BS to get up and running two years into a four-year program still haven't got cannabis on the table. Governor refused to extend the pilot program, which should be extended fairly by two more years. Uh, Kim McAuliffe, a spokeswoman for the industry group, the Medical Cannabis Alliance of Illinois, said expanding the list of medical conditions quote, was critical. She said some dispensaries, particularly downstate, may not open until January because of the short supply of product and patients. I can tell you why the supply of patients is low. It's not that there's no patients in Illinois. It's not. It's that these patients are not. Look, they got to give up fingerprints. What other medication in this country do you have to develop a fingerprint for? What other medication? I want to know one single drug you've got to give a fingerprint for in order to get it. Illinois, they're not. And, and look, the fingerprint isn't the big issue. You know what it is the issue? The doctors. Scared shitless in Illinois that they're going to get reprimanded or somehow have their license impacted or their practice negatively tarnished in public ways for their agreements to issue these certifications. That's what the holdup is. It's the doctors. Uh, because there's, no been, there's been no clear delineation that doctors won't be held responsible for, you know, their promotion of a quote-unquote Schedule One drug by the people in Illinois that oversee medical practitioners. The regulatory agencies have built-in threats against this purpose. So with the built-in threat and nothing to mitigate it, you've got doctors going, look, I'm not going to do that. I got a, re- I got a regular practice here with other stuff. I don't need to add this to it and put all that at risk. I'm not going to do it. Uh, Among the uh, growers, uh, Cresco is licensed for most dispensaries with plans to open growing centers in Joliet, Kankakee, and Lincoln. Cresco planned to host a cocktail reception Wednesday night for dispensary owners statewide who will be its potential customers. Growers like Cresco can't sell directly to the public. Dispensaries are granted more leeway in state rules to advertise their products, although ads are prohibited in certain locations, such as within 1,000 feet of schools. Really? Come on. Ads? Uh, Crest, look, the, the stupid CVS is right next to the school. Nobody cares that people are loading up on narcotics out there in the parking lot after they get their monthly drug prescriptions and dope out in the parking lot on their way home in their, you know, car. Nobody cares about that. Hey, kid, come over here and get some of my expensive drugs. None of this makes sense. None of it. Uh, in total, medical marijuana cultivation license holders say they spent Hundreds of millions of dollars building and equipping warehouses with elaborate environmental and security systems. The State Medical Cannabis Advisory Board will meet again on Wednesday to consider adding new medical conditions. But any such decisions are ultimately up to Ron, the, the administration, the mayor's administration. Last month, he uh, called, upon, called it premature to expand the program before any patient had been served and the program was evaluated. The uh, Illinois Department of Public Health plans to set up information booths at various state conferences, such as an HIV AIDS STD conference in October to educate community organizations and the public about the program, spokeswoman Melanie Arnold said. The state is also working on information to share with health care providers, but its primary focus is now issuing patient ID cards. Imagine that. You've just created a program that needs the support of these patients, but have left the patients without support. You see what happens when you give government the control of these issues when you don't write it for them? I'm, I'm hoping so much that MI Legalize has taken this ability back for the legislature. But the legislature here in Michigan has fought back. They're trying to change the, what 
what the definition of dispensary is in case we pass legal dispensaries here in Michigan. So the dispensaries have to be what their model and definition of dispensary is, not what the MI Legalized Proposition and Signature Campaign calls it. The Full Melt Show is a production of TFM Media.